everyone so this video this week we're going to be transforming our bus windows with additional blinds so we have blinds they're thermal blinds that we made ourselves in a previous video Cal, did you show any more magnets on those since last time <laughs> and we're going to be making those a little bit better by adding tabs as well so the first thing that we had to do was source some curtains so we went to Dunelm and basically just picked out a set of curtains that we knew were going to be big enough and that we liked the look of and then we got to cutting them up as we opted for eyelet curtains the first thing i did was actually chop the top of this off into a nice straight line and then marked out the first test blind which was in our case going to be for the back door using taylor's chalk to make sure that we had nice straight edges and this basically created an initial rectangle i originally wanted to make these no sew because i can't use a sewing machine so i used hem and tape to create an edge that went all the way around the first blind these little clippy things were really really helpful but I wasn't sure that this would quite work or hold over time. Nevertheless, pressed on until each of the edges were done. You have to hold it on there for about 20 seconds, making sure it's hot enough to melt the glue, but not the curtain itself. Pardon the mess. Oh, I've been trying to figure out how this will fold. Did the maths in the bus, but it's mind boggling. It's gonna have two hooks on each side. Next thing I'm gonna do is sew it up. I reckon the hem and tape would have lasted a while, but thankfully Kelly can sew, so broke loose the sewing machine before finally we added some velcro to the back and this was just sticky back velcro at this stage because it's what we had on hand. Because I wanted to hook these up I used this die to make a hole in the fabric. Probably not. Just saying. My table! <laughs> this leaves this really neat hole, and then using the jig, you pop on the eyelet on one side, thread it through from the front, and pop a bit on the back, and then using a hammer, you bang the die over it again, and it leaves this neat edge. The final thing I needed to do was add some hooks. So I decided to use these D hooks use the brad and some rivets. I used 3.2 millimeter black rivets and then four millimeter washers on the back so they didn't pull through. Now that the prototype's made, appreciate sure that was quick. I'm just gonna see how it will fit into the bus. It's gonna involve two L cup hooks and some Velcro. You can see here that I put two L hooks on either side. So they're like straight cup hooks basically. I positioned the middle one after so I could ensure that it was a nice and tight and taut, as it were, before putting the one on the edge. That's not too bad. I think I need shorter hooks. But the good thing about the big hooks is I'll be able to actually get up from the inside of the thing. Let's try. Oh, Pop them back up, it's basically just the reverse. Yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. It's not like the neatest looking thing in the world. Hey, ladybird. It seems to have a ladybird infestation out there. I think on the inside one, maybe more hooks. Shorter hooks. But for this one, because I want to be able to take it off, obviously, off and off from the inside. These might do the trick. And it's just so we've got a bit more insulation in the van. We've got just another thermal barrier between us and the outside window. That's the first one in and done. Now let's get into showing you how we did it. We needed five more for inside the bus. So just like the back door one, we basically cut out the shapes first. So we knew that we had enough material and we were good to go. This thing's brilliant for this sort of a thing. I'll link it down below, it's like a cuttery thing. His name is Wheelie, or Wheels for short. It's a bit like a pizza cutter. For fabric. Fabric. A little pause in the middle of this video. I'm curious at how it's four degrees here at the moment, so 4.1. And inside the bus, it says that it's four point, sorry, 
two or something along those lines. So what I'm going to do is fire up the diesel heater for two hours without the thermal blinds up. And then tomorrow we'll do exactly the same thing because the temperature is going to be the same with the thermal blinds up and see what difference that makes over the course of those couple of hours. And then hopefully when the other blinds are up, we can do exactly the same thing and just to see how that reduces it or, or what it does to the heat. Because I know without the blinds up in here, it does take a while to get up to temperature because so much is lost through the windows. Little experiment, bear with me. So diesel heater is on, two hours on the timer. Let's see what we get up to. And the overall increase was about 7.1 degrees over that two hours. Okay, so that's the first experiment done. Back tomorrow, put the blinds up. We'll try it again, see what we get. But that's quite underwhelming, really. Have a look at the underfloor heating, though. So I've got a, a sensor underneath on the opposite side of the diesel heater. It's good that we've got it under there because it saves us a lot of space and it keeps it nice and quiet in here. The noise you can hear is the max air. I'm just extracting out the uh, damp air that's in here. But you could imagine if it was in the vehicle, you've got all of that heat in here, also heating up the space, which would have heated up much quicker. Um, that said, I think for us, having it underneath is the best option. Anyway, blinds up. Let's see what that will do. And it did make a difference raising the temperature about a degree and a half more over the same time period. More interestingly though, the effect they had on the heat lost over time, which you can see roughly in this graph here. The Cal and I then went into full production mode, making each of the blinds, which basically was a rectangle, just of different sizes, depending on the window that it was gonna fit inside. We decided to sew around each of the edges this time because it was just a lot quicker and I added the same eyelets to each, one on each edge and one in the middle. Now getting these hooks right took a little bit of thinking. Basically I made sure it was lined up with the eyelet at the top and then folded it to where I wanted it to go before adding the eyelet on. We then added on sew on velcro because this is just so much cheaper than the stick on velcro and you can get it in much longer length okay excuse the uh, angle we're out here now trying to see if these are going to work so velcro is so long first thing i'm going to do is stick it above the window so this the stuff you buy here is sticky one side and so on the other so i'm going to stick this up here and then bang some staples in so I've bought some like rubber rubberized cup hooks to hang all this on the idea being that they can kind of hook up when they're not in use out of the way a little bit but we'll see if it works because like I said this could all be a big terrible waste of time and money I popped pilot holes through each of the holes so I could add the cup hooks through the plywood in my cabinets. And then I took a look outside before adding them to see any light leakage we had. Because obviously this is another benefit of having an additional set of blinds. The opposite side was added in exactly the same way. So here you can see there's no Velcro and then the Velcro was stuck up. The stickiness of this is quite poor so definitely add staples. <laughs> Okay, so because they um, go up like this, just literally just hold that onto the cup hooks that I've installed at the top. What I have found is the bottom ones, if I hook them up, because of the way that I've made them to be layered, not entirely on purpose, you can see part of the under side when they're up. I don't really want that, so what I'm going to do for the time being, I've borrowed some of Kelly's hairbands and I'm just looping them in there, but I've ordered some black swivel, um, like tiny little clips that you get on, off key rings that I think will complement them quite nicely. And then that way, obviously these flex and they won't. But for the time being, 
I'm just adding these on here just to give the layered effect really and to hide the um, lining once they're up. So one thing that obviously these blinds do do, do do, <laughs> they do cover quite a lot of window, which is a bit of a shame, but you know, the only other way really that I'd have around it, it was to make the like roll up blinds and I'll show you in a minute how quickly these can be deployed and put away. We just didn't want the faff of it. So yeah, to deploy them, literally just unhook them. And then you're good to go. I think what I'll end up doing, maybe, we'll see how we go when we take it on the trip. I might add some poppers along the bottom just to pop them up and then that way it'll stop any heat kind of leaking out when we're on the tilt, because you can see here where the bus curves in actually at the top is on the wall at the bottom it's not and i think you'd get that in any van really uh, but for the time being i'm pretty happy with that so yeah let me just show you with them all down and i am going to make something from the extra curtain that we've got left over to go here but that's going to be like a little project in itself for the time being i'm just going to use a pressure pole across um and use the curtain as it is so it look a bit untidy but it should help keep the heat in when we're away so just gonna take that with us and take the curtain with us shove it on it and make uh, make do a mend on the road and as i mentioned earlier here are the little clips they arrived and they did stiffen up the curtain a little bit more which is great experiment wise i can tell you it does warm up in here quicker i don't have any screen caps seem to have lost them and it's not cold enough for me to test it again so you have to take my word for it and i'll update you in a future video if that's of interest in terms of darkness in here let's just take you outside it is dark outside now and you've got the lights on in here along here much better much much better and i think if we add a couple of tabs on the bottom to keep these nice and tight it'll make all the difference again and you know we're never going to be a stealthy vehicle but it's nice to be able to keep all the air in and make sure we haven't got any sort of light leakage this is in the winter's midday with the light off you can see there's a bit of light leakage at the front in the cab which is why we want the curtain ow but it's pitch black everywhere else which is great news that is the blinds done and we're pretty happy with how they've gone. Hope you have a great week guys. Merry Christmas and take care.